Hi everyone, Curtin Zepp here. Today I want to do a quick little video on calculating the size in light years of your deep sky object that you're going after, whether it's a nebula or a galaxy or whatever. Now, most popular objects do in fact have the size calculated already for you, but some of the smaller, less imaged objects or a small galaxy or even a planetary nebula, they may not have the size calculated in light years. They may have it in arc minutes or arc seconds or something of that nature. But there is a calculator out there that you may or may not have seen where if you know the distance to the object, you can convert it to um, light years. And that's what I wanna go over in this video. Now be warned, I'm a chemistry teacher, not a mathematician, so follow it at your own risk. Oh, and one more thing, uh, Joe Navarro in a recent video recommended that all astrophotographers should have a NASA hat. So here's my NASA hat, Joe. Okay, well let's go, let's get started and I'll show you what this, how this size calculator works. Hello everyone. So here's this deep sky object calculator that I was talking about. Your size is equal to this 4.85 conversion factor times the width in pixels times the image scale in arc seconds per pixel multiplied by the distance. And this formula came to me from Gary Eim on Astrobin and he uses it a lot for his objects that he images because most of those things are very obscure objects that don't have the size already calculated. And I don't know where exactly he got this formula from. I think he mentioned he got it from the internet as well. So I want to talk about where all these numbers come from in a little bit more detail so you can, so I, so you can see what's going on here conceptually. And I'm going to do some examples so that I can show you that it actually works. So it actually comes from trigonometry. And if you remember your trigonometry, you can do what's called the tangent. You can take the tangent of the angle, theta here, if you know the angular distance between or how much your object takes up and you know the distance to the object, you can calculate the size of the object. So tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Your opposite being the size of your object and your adjacent being the distance to that object. So you know your theta angle and you know your distance to the object, it's really easy to calculate the size of the object. Now that is if the angle is very large. You can just rearrange the equations to solve for the opposite, tangent theta times the adjacent distance. The problem is most of our deep sky objects are very, very, very small and they're not in angles at all. They're actually in arc minutes or even arc seconds. So let's go take a look at all these values here. The first one is distance, and distance is required for this calculation, and most objects you can check Wikipedia or Stellarium, and they'll have the distance already there. For galaxies, a good source is the Simbad Astronomical Database, and if it's none of these places, then you may be out of luck. But hopefully you can get a decent value for the distance. All right, let's take a look at the width. Now, the width of the deep sky object, that's the number of pixels it takes to cross it. Now, I'm, I use PixInsight or Photoshop. It can be used for this measurement, and I'll show you how I do it in Photoshop. And again, the units are going to be in pixels. The next part is this scale term, and this scale term, you just look up the dimensions or the, the scale of your camera and telescope combination. And if you don't know it, most of you guys know it already, but if you don't, you can look it up on Astronomy Tools. I have a video, which I'll provide a link to. It's very easy to use Astronomy Tools. Or if you post your stuff to Astrobin and you plug in the information to Astrobin, it also gives you the scale there. And the units for scale are going to be in arc seconds per pixel. Now for this last term. This last term is the conversion factor. And this conversion factor is used in order to convert your tangent, this tangent angle, into a usable term. So 
Remember, one degree is equal to 3600 arc seconds. Now that's actually a conversion factor. So you can write it as one over 3600. So one degree per 3600 arc seconds. And if you divide it out, you're going to get 0 0.000277.8 arc seconds. Therefore, your tangent of 0.000277.8, which is degree arc seconds, becomes 4.85 times 10 to the negative 6 arcs, 1 over arc seconds, or arc seconds to the negative 1. Now, this is where my math may be a little fuzzy, but I believe the degrees end up going away when you take the tangent of that and you, you're left with 1 over arc seconds. Okay, so if that's the case, we can do a unit check. We've got our conversion factor, 4.85 over arc seconds. That's our conversion factor term up here. The width, which was in pixels, the scale, which was in arc seconds per pixels, and the distance, which was in light years, those units end up canceling out. Arc seconds can be canceled out, the pixels can be canceled out, and hot dog, you're left with light years, which is the unit you wanted. Okay, now let's take a look at some of my trials here, and I'll show you exactly how I did this. So I just made a little formula sheet using, so I just made a little formula sheet using a spreadsheet, and I can, now I can easily plug numbers in here and get the values. So let's go take a look at some of this stuff. The first one I'll do is the crescent nebula. Here's my calculator. So here's the crescent nebula. Here's my tangent converter. And I'm going to enter the pixels in here, and I'm going to enter the pixel scale. And the distance has been reported to be 4,700 light years. So all I got to do is just plug all these values in here, and I will uh, get an answer out of it. Now, the reported size of the Crescent Nebula, which is well known, is 25 light years. So we're going to see what I can come up with. Now, I happen to know my scale for, for the camera that I used to take that, uh, which was 2.43. That was, I took it with the Edge HD with Hyperstar, and the scale came out to be 2.43. So I'm going to plug that into here, 2.43. And... If you don't know the scale, as I said before, you can use this program called Astronomy Tools, and I'll provide a link for it and how you do that down in the uh, comment section. So I opened up Photoshop, and here's Photoshop. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger so it's in the viewing screen. And I open up a ruler in Photoshop. So these are the actual pixels. And now let me blow it up a bit, and let's take a look. I think I blew it up too much. Hold on. Let me, there we go. That's a little better. And if I scroll up here, uh, you'll see it says 1,000 to 1,400. And if you do the subtraction, that's uh, 400 pixels. But you'll notice the Crescent Nebula is sort of tilted. We can, we can actually rotate it a bit. So let me rotate the image a bit. And actually, I've done this already. So let me just uh, see if I can redo it again. So I've rotated it, rotated it so it's horizontal now. And now if we just match it up. Here's 1550. So this is probably 15. So here's about 1550, 1570. And this is about 2020. So 1570 to 2020 is about 450 pixels. So if we go back into the handy dandy calculator and we put pixels 450 and we press return. Look at that, we get uh, 24.9 light years and the reported size was 25 light years. So it worked for that one. Let's do another one. Let's do this NGC 4395. Now that one I used with my ASI 1600 and AstroTech 115 with a focal reducer of 0.8 and that camera scale was 1.207. Okay, and the reported size is supposed to be 50,000 light years. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, here we are with NGC 4395, and we'll just make it bigger. And galaxies are kind of tough, or at least the larger ones, because they sort of peter off in the wonderland here. Smaller ones are have more of a defined end to it. So this one, eh, let's go 1,200 sort of peering out around 1800. So we'll go with 600. 
make it quick quick and easy and if we just plug 600 in here and we get 49,000 light years approximately based on my quick estimation it's supposed to be 50,000 light years so again this is uh pretty good just gives you a really good estimation and let's see what else we can do what was our next one the medusa nebula here's a smaller one so let's take a look at the medusa nebula and again i used the astrotech 115 for that one that's set up and we'll come over and where are we photoshop medusa and let's see what we get for this one let's blow it up all right so Main part around 800 to 2300, about 500, I guess. And let's plug in 500 and see what we get. And we get 4.4 light years, and we're supposed to get a reported value of four light years. So, well, I'm pretty happy with this converter. I think it works well enough, anyways. I hope it was useful to you, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.